and this is the customer gateway okay then you have the security group for et0 and eth1 so ets0 is this which will allow tcp ip on port 80 which is like you have you can have your http running not http it goes to 443 you can have your ssh running which goes to tcp 22 and then yeah so your network is this and it goes web server route table so what is it if the traffic is coming to this it will go to this interface if it is coming from this ip it will go to this it will coming from this it goes and then this, this is the default gateway okay and uh, this is the route table so here this is the local means like within so when this is zero it's all ip is allowed this is the virtual gateway vzw okay which is here and this is the route for this same here this is a route for this so basically like whatever you send it will go here or either if from here if you send it, it goes here okay based on this route table and this is for the local so these are the same cidr this is basically what does it mean yeah so here you know one can connect like this okay so this is the way we have to read and understand let's clean this okay then there is an option how do you use it uh, create a dual home instance create a low budget high stability best for best practices for configuring network interest this is you know one of the questions where you can ask like uh, what are best practices for network interfaces okay so let me highlight this yeah this you can remember it okay now okay so let's let's go back here so it's there it says like configure using a ec2 net utils you can just read this and uh, from a solution perspective you know um just focusing on the interview part it will be more focused on you know more higher layer so have a knowledge of is good but you do not need to actually remember these and uh yeah request management how do you manage it you describe it and then you get it announced networking so this is how you go it you just go through the these are you know the info you actually do not require mm, operating system optimizations these you do not need to do just like try to scroll let's move fast here you do not require to do this thing okay let's move okay that's more we get i think just i think we can skip this section okay you can uh, read about what is a placement group this is important uh, interview question what is placement groups and you can just read through this see that there are different placement groups and then this is important what is the network uh, m2u this is important and then you can just read it virtual vpc definitely this is important and i think uh, most of you already know a bit of it so just uh, brushing up your skill sets here easy to skip classic okay So this is uh, one of the basic thing, you know, where you instance on a single flat network that you share with other customers. That is something you need to know and how this is achieved. What is the classic allow you to link in uh, VPC to you with the, the same region. So classic link is, you know, uh, you can just know it. Just keep in your mind what is elastic uh, EC2 classic, classic link. And uh, there is one thing, a private link is also, you know, one of the important info okay then just read through this okay this is one of the important question you know how will you 
migrate EC2 classic to a VPC. So this scenario can come in, you know, in Uganda there are like 10 teams, you know, one of them who have registered for issue to classic and the other ninth hour are into VPC. And then, you know, and those organizations get consolidated and they realize like, why not include it in my VPC because I'm already subscribed to more of the resolutions which are, you know, pending up and running. And then you think, okay, why to pay for the FP extra and then you come in. So you have to uh, just go through, uh, uh, you know, steps and, uh, so basically you go to the console, choose a create a request, choose account and billing support, account can you choose this thing and then you submit your request. And uh, then Oracle, uh, not Oracle, basically AWS support uh, will uh, guide you how to do it. And these are the standard uh, procedures. They will follow internally and then uh, And then they'll give you the steps. How do you do that? And one can do that with security. So security in the cloud is a joint responsibility of the customers and the AWS. AWS will be responsible for infrastructure support and uh, users are responsible for data security. Okay, this is the baseline and how they do it they have the network isolation they have an isolation at the physical level they they control the network traffic then the endpoint you create it endpoint security okay resilience so they use the concept of availability zones and regions and they with this resolution data protection is uh, there is some suggestion that you use mfa use a tls to communicate and use CloudTrail, use encryption solutions, and uh, use this thing, and you can have an encryption at rest and encryption and transit. I think uh, encryption at rest versus transit, yeah. This could be one of the important, not important, one of the interview question, and then I am, I am an LMA, so to creating an IAM group, and then, to decide an IAM policies, what to allow, this is the policy structure. You can either go through this JSON document, statement, action, resources, yes. And uh, okay, so you have to, yeah, you have to follow this document. And then once you create those policies and roles, you tag the resources here and go for it. Then examples of this work is CDK. How do you read only specific reasons? And uh, you just follow this thing, creating snapshot with the tag. And uh, until you are not, you know, interviewing for the security role, having a knowledge is good, you know. And then uh, so in short, basically, what happens through the IM, you create a role and in that roles you define what are uh, what this particular roles are allowed to do and then you assign those roles to users and once the user having that once the user login his actions will be controlled based on the roles assigned to him and in internally inside the roles whatever the actions are allowed those will be implemented okay then you can do the same to easy to console and you can just uh, yeah what then is this statement and you can just read through this i am rules yeah create an and define the accounts so as you can assume the role define the actions resources specify it and then you have to go this way okay. network before you start inbound traffic how do you do that and writing a rule for involved access traffic to a license. So these are important questions. Now, how do you allow inbound traffic? Okay, so you can run this thing and key pairs are important. Create a key pair. How do you do it? Go to the IC technical network security key pairs, create key pairs, and do it and then import, or either you can import it. So security groups, there are rule. How do you do it? 
so these says are always permissive you can't create a rule that deny access stateful so you have to understand stateful versus stateless this is important stateful versus stateless okay you can read through this so pretty much uh, what you know unconscious we know that what the best we need to have in order to secure those are only the things which have been defined here so there's nothing conceptually to explain and then you have to know these database rule based on the ip address which are the port you need to open the bins in this you will you are allowing all https and port 80 but when you have the port 443 you're allowing https and then once you do this you are using apc6 and on https so you know this is the way you have to work 22 and this thing uh, 22 is for ssh and this is for remote desktop so you have to configure based on these tables so i think if you do it you know two three times um, you should be good so so there is in a compilation validation for amazon tg this is done by the third party security and these you know SOX, PCI, random HIPAA, and others, they will uh, they have certain guidelines based on that. Uh, they will uh, validate whether your uh, you can have your own this thing as an organization. They will validate whether your infra is good. Okay. So now let's come to the storage. So this is an Elastic File System. This is the Elastic. Uh, okay, Elastic File System. Then you have an EBS, then you have an S3, then you have a host computer. Okay, so let's go here. It's elastic block storage, which is called EBS. Features are like a specific capability zone, general purpose, power reason, thoroughport, cold, encrypted volume, point in time snapshot, performance metrics such as bandwidth. EBS volumes, EBS data availability, data persistence, data encryption, snapshot. Then, okay, volume types or what? Okay, you need solid state or hard disk, then based on there, you have the configurational parameters that you need to know it. You, yeah. And then how these credits are done, there is nothing, yeah. Not thing specific you know somebody will ask you but you uh, like in a one hour interview i don't think somebody can go that detail but generally we won't uh, pretend to or remember this you know and how do you do that you go to your easy to console and then elastic block store ebs and so what you can do you just log into your console go to your you know and then from there you select uh, select ec2 and then see what are the things you can do it by default so most of the things can be done individually and once you about to launch your instances you have those options available you know as you move into from simple to advanced and get those things attached and internally it works for you so there is a limitations um so it says like one volumes uh, can go to 16 and uh, you can US East, West, performance, working with multi-attach, monitoring, making a volume available for use. You can have the same command here, viewing volume details, you can view it and then you can replace it. Say monitoring the status, you can monitor the status, these, these you can just do it, you know. Detaching basically is about removing it. Deleting basically is like wiping out everything. EBS snapshot is about taking the backup. And uh, yeah, you can do it. Then how do you create? You can encrypt. These are the consideration. You go to the console and multiple volume is like, you know, um, Create a snapshot of the volume of an instance. You can do it multiple places. Deleting, how do you delete it? Then, how do you copy it? There is a way, and there are certain rules you know you have to follow. Then, view you can view the info using the AWS client CLI. You can share a snapshot if you want to share it. There is an option, yes, you share it. Then, you can do the same thing. 
accessing client then you're accessing the contents of the EPS client and uh, client storage then moving next logging API call for the EPS direct EPS cloud trail you can log into the cloud trail you can start import API automating the this thing they just let's move here data service and these are just let me get to get ahead you know i don't want you to remember everything these are my these are normal thing how do you do it how do you extend it lsblk these are the unix command then just one thing when you say about the unix command let's say i say top to top which gives me the details i should know what do i read out of it you know because suddenly your interview will just go from there and if you fumble it means like you know it but you don't use it right so you have to you know know the basic very clearly that is more important because no because you know what happens like the interview will start with a simple and then slowly slowly once you cross you go if you are targeting for some uh, yeah the if you're targeting for the some better company so or maybe it also depends you know some people yeah ebs optimization instances you don't need it how do you volume performance factor that you can degrade as your performance you know okay so this is uh, this is one you know important thing uh, amazon ebs performance steps i would say go through it and um, so it says understand your workload so when you are uh, sliding volume from snapshot factor that can degrade your performance Okay, so basically what happens like in short, you know, how your performance get degraded is like if that volume is in use, that is the first thing and it can be used for, or it is it is getting accessed and you are trying to uh, work further on it, you know, so it's, it's all about IO and input and output, you know, so in short, and then you need to measure those uh, parameters. IO's volume queue length and latency. So you need to know these, you know, keywords like um, IOPs, input output processing per second, volume queue length. What is latency? What is RTO? What is RPO? And I think this is not related to the BS, but yeah, just note it down. And IO size, volume to IO size, volume throughput. Okay, using the cloud watch, you do it, you initialize your volume, sizing volume, and you have the right configurations. So you have to understand red and red zero. Now options, what are these? So, so basically what we're saying, like, you know, in the AWS, you have all the red configuration apply uh, allowed and yes i would say this could be you know most important question it can come what is the right configuration and what is the difference and certain advantage and disadvantage you need to know and then how do you do it from the command how do you create it logically you should know if you're not able to remember the syntax here okay and uh, benchmark EBS volume, you can test the performance. So this is like launch an EBS optimized instance, create this thing, set up your instance, setting your process engine, setting a thought about. Go ahead and then if it is required, you can do it. Maybe, you know, it's not important, but you know, one interview question can be from how do you benchmark? How do you benchmark EBS volume? EVS volume. See, EC2 is important because what happens like the very first thing you would do in an EC2 and then you try to go somewhere else and 90% of the cases. So EVS matrix, these are the matrices and uh, you don't need to remember it, but once you see the cloud was, you are able to sort of know what these are. So these are like more self-explanatory and uh, moving ahead, uh, you can just ignore these and let's move. 
you go for the instance store what is that host one a b c store and line this that field okay these are the you know instance store is like uh, this is yep instance store instance store instance c okay adding how do you add it and then if you can do the same for sd let's you need to know what is swap this is the one of the basic question what is swap volume so in short what happens like if a ram defined and if you and you have allocated a different memory areas of your ram and uh, if your processors could not get get the nf memory from the random access memory or basically the ram it just uh, swap it to the swap volume or swap area and continue its processing and this swap area comes from the hard disk uh, but it act as if like a virtual ram so yeah file storage if yes plastic file system then okay fx is for window file server then amazon s3 we all know what it is you can have this thing volume limit okay bandwidth device naming you can have your device name block device mapping i don't think you know somebody will go here and uh, ask you to tell this these are like you know here what are the radius gone keep here easy to use applied ami these are the resources and uh, just we need to just like i don't think so okay let's move and uh, from interview perspective you can tag okay just your tagging so that okay to help you manage them you, know, you can assign your own metadata to each resource in the form of a tag tags enable you to characterize your individual resource in a different form by purpose or environment so basically tag is like you know you can make it in broad environment and all those things so this is something not need a basic explanations service quotas uh, when you sign up uh, you have a uh, different limits based on that you know because what happens like if they give you written limited uh, you know it can create chaos for other people because physically it takes time to scale you know the infra at there and also so they give you enough limit and you can decide and based on the pricing and all and okay then you can have uh, you have a free tool called cost explorer so the question can come you know uh, how to use cost explorer okay then either cost and uses of uh, ec2 instance and uses of your reserve instances and uh, these things you can get an answer that how much you spend hours and all okay then there is a command how do you troubleshoot it so based on that uh, you can read it and uh, they have the different scenario that you are having a problem connecting and then then stopping your instance are uh, not stopping and then you're not able to terminate it and then failure stitch check and then there are different options uh, how do you do that and uh, pretty much like you know uh, most 70 80 percent you know what to do and where to get out but for the specific failure you know definitely you cannot remember this thing and i won't say and i think if somebody is asking you at this level i think that's the time not to go for that company whatsoever <laughs> at least at that moment and uh, yeah so so interview could not be you know that i have a document available and i just click it for people and then round robin you know everybody is speaking so it becomes actually difficult it's not something we are used to but uh, at least uh, if you see it here and uh, so the latest is like August 6th. They have updated some webland zone, which says is a zone I think where the webland infrastructure is deployed basically for telecommunication industry. And I think the document has been long started. Okay, 2019. Okay, not like that. Okay, so it's long all. So it's like 2010. Okay. And I think that's all for today. And uh, we'll meet again on for some other document review 
and uh, i'm planning to you know uh, create a video on uh, interview questions so my plan is like i will have uh, 10 questions and uh, then i'll try to answer without referencing anything and uh, we'll see i think you know it's like a more of a preparation that how do you an answer over the telephonic interview and it depends on your remembrance part how better you explain it so the only thing is more you practice you should be able to uh, get into more better shape so let's see and thanks you all for this today and, and this is the, like i think the last uh, i'll upload this video sometime later today and this is the last part of this easy to document review i have listed down the question and answer and i will put it in my blog um, so i'm just you know updating those and pretty much uh, we can further meet comment and you know and we'll see you soon thank you